Shalom everyone, this is Ike, and welcome to Hebrew Israelite Awakenings. Today's topic is Biblical Skin Disease. Now we're going to be talking about Biblical Skin Diseases, namely the Biblical Skin Disease known as Clean Leprosy. Now Clean Leprosy is known today as Vitiligo and Albinism. You know, albino people, they don't have no skin pigmentation at all, no, no melanin in their skin. That's called albinism. And people who have the bright spots on their skin, you know, when they start losing melanin in certain spots of their skin, that's called vitiligo. Well, that's actually in the Bible and is known as clean leprosy. Not the leprosy that has all the, the bumps and the, the scars and the scabs and stuff like that, the one that can kill you. Not that leprosy. This was known as clean leprosy back then. Today is known as albinism and vitiligo. But I'm about to go through the scriptures on that for you if you never came across that before. Now, first we're going to deal with vitiligo, right? It says, this is a black person that has the skin disease called clean leprosy. Vitiligo by scriptures. Now, we're going to Leviticus chapter 13, verses 38 and 39. And it's going to be on the screen. So um, Leviticus 13, 38, 39. And it reads, it says, If a man or a woman has bright spots on the skin of the body, specifically white bright spots, then the priest shall look. And indeed, if the bright spots on the skin of the body are dull white, it is a bright spot that grows on his skin. He is clean. So if somebody has these bright spots on their skin, dull white spots, the person is clean. This is known as vitiligo. Vitiligo is a skin pigmentation disorder that affects people of color that are high in melanin. The person will begin losing their skin pigmentation and break out with Bright white spots. Next, we're going to Exodus chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And it says, Furthermore, the Most High said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, white like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, his hand restored like his other flesh. Now this is talking about Moses. One of the signs that Moses, that the Most High wanted Moses to show to Pharaoh that he had the Most High Yah with him and that the God of the children of Israel was real is that he wanted him to take his hand. And put it in his bosom, right? Like, you know, you have a, you have a coat on, a shirt, and you take, you, you, you open shirt, you put it in your bosom, and you pull it out. Well, he told him to put his hand in his bosom, pull it back out, and his hand would be white as snow, leprous. Right? And then put your hand back in there again, and return it, and it be as, a, as your other flesh. Now, when Moses put his hand in his bosom, right, it became white. White as snow. He had no more pigmentation in his skin, in his hand. Now, if Moses was a Caucasian person, him and Pharaoh is sitting across from him, right? And he did this, and he's white, and he put his hand in his bosom, and he pulled it back out, and it was still white. Pharaoh wouldn't have noticed anything, right? Because Pharaoh was black. The Egyptians were black. The, the ancient Egyptians of the time of Moses were all what we call today black people. So Moses had to be black to take his hand, show it to the Pharaoh, put it in his bosom and pull it back out and his hand was white as snow, right? Which is a form of leprosy, vitiligo, that they were familiar with because vitiligo was a common thing that happened to black people back then and now. It's nothing new. So when he showed them his hand and it was white as snow, they were like, oh, what the? Then he put it in and put it back out and it was back as his other flesh. They knew that wasn't no magic trick. They knew that 
that you know that was a miracle. You see what I'm saying? Because if, it, if he had, let's say he had some white substance in his in his in his in his in his coat in his in his, in his bosom, when he pulled it out, put it back in, it been white. And when he put it out, put it back in there, and put it out again, it wouldn't have been back black. It wouldn't have been back to his normal. His, his, you know what I'm saying? So that was one of the miracles that Moses did. One of the first miracles he did. Now you notice on every Ten Commandments movie, every one of these movies that's supposed to have Moses in it, that miracle. That sign that the Most High told Moses to do, you notice in the movie, he never do it. That's the one sign. They show him turning the, the, the river into blood, and they show the locusts eating all the crops, and all of the frogs, and all that stuff. They show all of that, but they never show Moses taking his hand, putting it in his bosom, and it's coming out white as snow, and putting it back in there, and then turning back and says, other flesh. Because that proves that the children of Israel was black. And they don't want you to know that. So they never go, they're not going to show that. And a lot of people don't even know that even happened because people don't read the Bible for themselves. These people were black. And in the Bible, they talk about this disease, which is known as clean leprosy in the scriptures, where people would lose their skin pigmentation. This mostly affects people of color. Negroids. Now, Caucasians get it too. But you know what they look like when they get rid of LIGO? They have be white, their eyes be looking all red. They look scary as hell. Here's a picture. Ding! If I found one. This is how they look when they have it LIGO. Creepy, scary as hell. Make you wanna run. They look like that white man that was in the Vinci Code. You know that, that man that had no skin pigmentation at all in the, the first the Vinci Code movie? That's what they look like when they have it LIGO. Look like that. But uh <laughs> Let's go. Let's move on to the next biblical skin disease, known as albinism, albino, when a person has no skin pigmentation at all. It says albinism is a defect of melanin production that results in little or no color pigment in the skin, hair, or eyes. Because this disease, this clean leprosy, it, um, when it's albinism, when it's in the form of albinism, it affects the hair and it also affects the eyes. It says, Leviticus chapter 13, verses 12 and 13. It says, and if a leprosy breaks out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of him that had the plague from his head even to his feet, Wheresoever the priest look it, then the priest shall consider and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that had the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. So the priest examine this person and they're white from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. It have all turned dull white. This is a form of leprosy. He is clean. So we have people in Africa today that have vitiligo. I mean, albinism, right? vitiligo and albinism. They stand out from everybody else. Now, black people, let me make this point right quick. Black people, right? Negro people, brown skinned people, people of, of my race, of my, of my, of my descendants. We have been giving birth to white children forever. It ain't new. Two black people can give birth to a light-skinned person, a, a red person, a white person, a black person. We give birth to all colors because the black man is, and the woman, the black man and woman are the original black man and woman. They are the original. We produce white children with blonde hair and blue eyes. We do it today. Two black people can produce a white child with blonde hair and blue eyes. Two black people can produce a white child with red hair and green eyes. It happens all the time. It happens in Africa, in America, in Brazil. Everywhere that black people live, they are producing this. You go to the island of Solomon. Look up the island of Solomon. The island of Solomon... It's filled with black people with natural blonde hair. Their hair grows blonde. 
straight curly. We we look black people come in straight hair, natural straight hair. Look at the black people in India. Look at the uh, the Aborigines of Indonesia. Black people with straight hair. Look at the black people, the Aboriginals of Australia. I mean, um, in the Australia, Indonesia, and some of the, in India. Black people with straight hair, natural straight hair, their straight hair, it comes out of their own head. You see what I'm saying? Indonesia, Australia, India. We have black people, the, the Native Americans, the original Native Americans, the black ones that were here, that white people damn near genocide and killed damn near all of them and were sending them back to Europe. And to be slaves in Europe and 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 and, and in Russia and in Britain and all these different places because the black Native Americans that were here, they were damn near wiped out and they were being shipped back overseas to be slaves to the the damn Queen and the Duchess and all this kind of foolishness. When you study your history, now and they were not only black Indians here; they were also what we would call today Mongoloid Native Americans too. What we would call today Asianics. They had those Native Americans here too. Now they didn't wipe them out. They made marriages with them and they procreated with them. And that produced that your, your Mexican your Mexican looking people and your Native Americans of today that have the little slanted looking eyes. Those were the Native Americans that were of Asianic descent. They were of Mongoloid descent. That were them. Now, they were black Native Americans, but the, the Europeans, they try to hide that history from you. They try to hide the fact that they were black Native Americans here. And they had black Native Americans here with straight hair. And they had black Native Americans here with the woolly textured hair. They damn near killed them all and they were shipping them overseas. They brought black African slaves, black Hebrew slaves that were, that were in Africa because, you know, the children of Israel, when the Romans came down to conquer the, the, the land of Israel... The children of Israel fleed into Africa and was fugitives and refugees in the land of Africa, in the land of Kemet, right? So the Hebrews left Israel and came into Africa. They were refugees in Africa. And what do refugees do? They become servants to the people who land they're living in, right? You're kind of a slave in this people land, this land. These people are like, we'll let you live in our land, but you got to serve us. You got to do this. You got to do that, right? So that's where we was in Africa. We were these people's servants. We were these people's slaves. We was like what the Mexicans are here, right? And then when the white people came and started conquering Africa, the, the, the white people took the wealth of the Africans, the, 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 the Moors, right? Because the Moors conquered Africa, and they were ruling in Africa with the religion we know today as Islam. They were ruling in, in Africa, and they took the Hebrews and made us slaves in Africa to help do them, to help them do their ministry and help kill people, this and that. And they was even they was cutting all black people's hands after Hebrew hands. They was killing the women. They was castrating the black slaves. Let me tell you something. What the black people, the Hebrews went through in Africa and in Arabia with the Muslims was way worse than what we went through here in America with these European Edomites. Trust. There was not... They used to beat us. They used to rape our women and stuff. That's, that's common to being a slave. But what those Moors did to us, what those Muslim Moors did to us, was way worse than what these white people doing to us. What they did to us during slavery and what they're doing to us now. Way worse. Because they castrated the men. But uh, let's let's get back into this. Sorry I had to give y'all a quick history lesson. But let's get back into this. Albinism. Next we're going to Numbers chapter 12 verses 9 and 10. And it says... So the anger of Yah was arose against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed, he, I mean, when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Then Aaron turned towards Miriam, and there she was, a leper. So we're talking about when Miriam and Aaron rose up against Moses, and was mad at Moses because, you know, Moses started giving the laws that the Mosai gave to him to give to the children of Israel. And when the Mosai started talking about the children of Israel came married outside of their nationality, outside their race, the children of Israel realized that, wait a minute, Moses, didn't Moses marry an um, Ethiopian woman? They're talking about um, the Moses' wife that he got when he came out of Egypt, when he helped the, 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 the three women with the men that was trying to, like, mess over them. That's the woman they're talking about. 
that Moses did not go out and marry another wife and marry a, a second wife who was Ethiopian. They're talking about his first wife, Huz. I forgot her name, Zipporah, Zip, Zip or something, something with a Z. They're talking about her. He didn't marry a second wife who was an Ethiopian. They're talking about the wife he had. The Midianites are descendants of Abraham. So Moses' wife, his Midianite wife, was of the seed of Abraham. She was from the line of Shem because she was of the seed of Abraham. There we go. Yeah, so they was calling her a Cushite, a Put, a Putite, or whatever. That's what they was calling her. But she was of Abraham. But they was making these accusations against him. About, well, well, he married her. She wasn't of the line of Israel. She wasn't from us. And she wasn't. So they came against Moses about this, trying to bring accusation against him. The Most High got angry about this, and he cursed Miriam white as snow. So he turned a black woman, Miriam, into a white woman. He turned her white as snow from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And they was like, oh, my God. You know, they was tripping out about this. because They was like, you know, oh, my God, you turned this beautiful black woman into a, 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 an albino. That's in Numbers chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Okay, next. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 27. It says, therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to the, Ge the, Gehaz, the Gehaz and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous as white as snow. So this was the most high cursing the descendants of Naaman with the, the plague of leprosy. He's saying that this, this plague should be on your descendants forever. So every time this man and his children and his children's children had children, they all came out with albinism. They all came out leprous, white as snow. Albinism. Now, another thing too that I want to read to y'all, but I don't want to make this video too long, was the fact that Noah had the skin disease known as albinism as well. Noah had albinism as well. And he was like the first person to ever have this skin pigmentation disorder. And it's talked about in the book of Enoch. If you go to the book of Enoch, chapter 106, verses 1 through 12, it describes Noah being the first person to have the skin pigmentation disorder known as albinism. And, and how it tripped them out. It was like their first time seeing a child born that was pale, dull white. And, this, and, and with that, because like I said, people who have albinism, albinism also affects their eyes. So this was a, a, a child that was white with like bright eyes and they was tripping out about it. He was describing this child as a child that he never seen before. He was even praying about it, like, what, what, is this some kind of angel or something? Or did, is, did my wife cheat on me? What is this? What, how did we produce this? He was the first child that had this skin pigmentation disorder. In the book of Enoch, it describes the first person who ever had this skin pigmentation disorder. So this goes to show you that in the time of Noah, all the way up until the next child who was described by a skin color, there was no white people that, that, that even had this skin pigmentation order until Noah. And the next person that the Bible describes as having some kind of skin, some kind of skin problem or something is Esau. When it says he came out red and hairy. And we know that they're describing his skin color, right? And Edom in Hebrew is Adam. Which is which kind of refers to Adam. Adam was the first man ever created, right? He's the beginning of creation. Edom, Adam, it, it, it refers to like Adam, which is like he's the first person that came out like this. You see what I'm saying? So Esau was the first person that came out like this, red and hairy. When it says hairy, we know that when Jacob was trying to deceive his father and to give him the blessing that he was about to bestow on Esau that was actually his because Esau had sold his birthright. He used the skin of a goat and put the skins of goats on him. So when his father felt him, he would feel that, that the hairiness of Esau and feel that straight hair to, to, to know that, oh, okay, this, this is my son Esau. Because we have woolly textured hair. Our hair is woolly. Their hair is straight. So if I feel, if I'm, if I'm blind and a white person, a black person come to me and I feel a black person's arm, our hair is curly. When they say we have nappy hair, nappy, the word nappy means tight curls. I know people use it as a, uh, um, dang, that word just slipped out of my mouth. 
a dang, it's a D word. Derog derogatory word. They use it as a derogatory word. Nappy, but the word nappy actually means tight curls. It means your hair is extremely curly. It's really tightly curled. That's what that word means. So even the hair on my arms, the hair on my chest is, is curly. You can feel it. But then you bring a white person, their hair is straight. You can, you can tell, if I feel the arms of two people, a black person, a white person, I'm blind, I can tell the arms of a white person and a black person because the black person have curly hair, it's tightly curled, and they have straight, long, straight hair. They hair grow way longer than ours. On their arms, on their legs, on their chest, on their back, on their face. White people can grow a full, pale people, the pink people, because they paint. White people do have this skin pigmentation. It is pink. It's pink comes from red. Pink is a mixture of white and red. Pink. White people are pink. So they do have a skin pigmentation. That's why this skin disease does affect them. Because they are reddish. They are pink. We call Esau Edom. And Edom means red. We refer to these people as the red people. That's why they keep, the scriptures keep telling us when you read Genesis. And Edom and Esau is Edom. Esau is red. Every time you say Esau is Edom, it's telling you and Esau is red. So we continuously describe these people as a color. And that's why they refer to us as a color. They call us niggers, negro. Negro means black. They call the people of, of Put in Ethiopia. Ethiopian. Ethiopian is a derogatory word that meant burnt face. It means black. Ethiopia, black, kush, black. This, this means black. They talk about your skin color. So they doing to us what we did to them. We called them Edom. Edomites, Adumians, and now they call us niggas. Black. Right? But the scripture says that we will be called a byword. And that's what we call today. We call niggas. We even call each other niggas. Africans don't call each other niggas. People in Africa don't call each other niggas. They don't call each other black. Because they know who they are. They know where they come from. They know their descendants, their lineage, their line. We, the children of Israel, who have been taken here as captives and as, and, as, and, and as slaves, we don't know our nationality. We don't know our identity. So we also call ourselves black. Right? There's no land called black. Now there's a land, a land called Niger and, and Africa and Kush and, and put what, what they call Africa, what the, what, the, what the Africans say Africa was called before. White people came and conquered it and named it after a man named Afri Africans, whatever his name was. Um, his name was close to how Africa is pronounced. Kemet. There's a land called Niger and Kemet that a lot of slaves came from because, you know, the Congo is, a, is like a, a, a country right underneath Niger, right? Where they shipped a lot of slaves from over there to over here. So they called us niggers or Nigers. So if you want to trace your lineage back somewhere, I mean, even when you do that DNA test, it traces you back to those countries, to the Congo, to Niger, to, um, you know, these different areas. But yeah, that's going to conclude today's Bible study lesson. Vitiligo and albinism. We only focused on them because they are other biblical skin diseases and uh, things, you know, that people had that's not covered today. Today we just focused on vitiligo and albinism. Two biblical skin diseases that were common to those black people today, back then, and today. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave you this video went way over the time I wanted to go over. So the quality may not be as good, even though I got this brand new light. But um, let me go ahead and leave you with the priestly blessing before we go, as I always do, you know, in these episodes. May Yah bless you and keep you. May Yah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next time, everyone, peace and shalom.